Welcome to the Running Back Podcast, where we run back everything from the 80s and 90s. I'm Jason. I'm Sarah. And today we are running back Batman from 1989. Where do you want to start? Uh, it had a budget of $35 million. How do you think it did? I would say at least doubled. It was the fastest ever to $100 million. It did $100 million in 11 days. Is the it was the fifth highest grossing film at the time, and while it was in theaters, it ended up grossing four hundred and eleven point five million dollars. Is this nineteen eighty nine dollars? Yeah, they tapped into that comic book fanboy market. I reckon in North America it did two hundred and fifty one point two million, and internationally another hundred and sixty point one five million. But that was from the box office. At that time, it was in the box office. It came out in June of 89, and it didn't leave the box office, the theaters, until December. So it was in theaters for seven months. That explains why I saw it in a rinky-dink movie theater in our home. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> that no longer exists. Right. But it's kind of funny because the movie opens up. And, you know, opening credits, and in the middle of one of those, it says, based on stories from magazines published by DC Comics Incorporated. Magazines? It seems like they went out of their way to avoid the word comics when they could. Hmm. Well, even yeah. though even though those comic boy or comic fanboys showed up to come see this fucking movie. I guess it was a different time. You wanted to get as many people as you could and not as many people were into comics at the time. I feel like more people... I feel like it's more widespread now. But a lot of people have this... Thanks to Marvel. A lot of people have a... Comic book people are hoarder... (laughs) Hoarder nerds. I'm just gonna cut out just you saying that. Hoarder nerds. Just comic book people are hoarder nerds. And see if I can't get you that hate mail you want so bad. Uh, it's not going to happen for a while. So, Michael Keaton is Batman, Bruce Wayne. And a whole bunch of other people wanted to be Batman and were thought of for Batman. And most of them are normal. Mel Gibson, Kevin Costner, Willem Dafoe, Tom Selleck, Harrison Ford. Charlie Sheen, Ray Liotta, Piers Brosnan. Here's one real out of left field for you, though. They considered Bill Murray to be Batman. That'd be a whole different Batman movie, wouldn't it? It does seem like it would feel a little bit different. Yeah, like real weird. Now, apparently they didn't want Michael Keaton either because he was only known for comedy and they didn't think he could do it. And Tim Burton really went to bat for him. He really wanted him. He said that he's the kind of person that would have to dress up as a bat in order to scare criminals. That if you put... True. That if you put, you know, some muscle-bound action star in the suit, it just becomes comical. But if you put this mild-mannered guy like Michael Keaton in the bat suit, he can actually be scary. It's kind of the way uh, Robert Downey Jr. works. Robert Downey Jr. works as Iron Man. Because by himself, he's he's not very big. Right. Not very intimidating. Mm-hmm. Well, I yeah. can see that. Yeah. So while we're just talking about casting controversies, they had a bunch of people lined up for the Joker as well. Apparently, Willem Dafoe was like, if I can't be Batman, I'm going to be Joker. I could No, I couldn't see him as Batman, but I could I see, see him, him as Joker. Joker. James Woods, David Bowie, and Robin Williams, who really, really wanted it. Robin, Robin Williams, Williams would have made a good Joker. Wanted it. And they announced that Robin Williams got it and was going to be Joker. But he never was going to. It was just to pressure Jack Nicholson into saying yes. And when Robin Williams found out he was never actually up for it and they just used him, he refused to be in any Warner Brother movies ever until they formally apologized. And they wanted him to be the Riddler in the sequel, and he wouldn't do it because they hadn't apologized to him. 
or using him. Now, as we I learned, can't really see him as the Riddler. Me either. But as we learned in Aladdin, a lot of people like to really fuck over Robin Williams, and he really holds a grudge. As he should. I'm not saying he shouldn't. I'm just saying it will be remembered. I could see. I think could see him as Joker. I think Willem Dafoe would have made a Willem good Dafoe Joker. Made he looked, good already Joker. fucking looks like the Joker. The little smile and the lines and the cheeks. Got any other? historical Um, tidbits just one so like in the modern day like the dark knight trilogy gotham was just pittsburgh they just used pittsburgh they built gotham city on a lot somewhere it cost five million dollars like they built this fucking city like kind of just like the facades the streets yeah but i mean you know, not like a miniature version. Like, they built the goddamn city. Now, when you... Before we watched it this time, do you remember there being as much animation? Like, it's very subtle. It's usually in dark parts of the screen. The searchlights sometimes were animated when they're up on the top of the cathedral. The... When one of Joker's henchmen falls down the stairwell... He falls until a certain point, and you could, if you look in closely, you can kind of tell it turns into like an animated shadow. When you say animated, do you mean like a computer or CGI? No, 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 like somebody drew it. Animated CGI would have looked better, or actually, CGI might have looked worse at this point. But it was always a very dark part of the screen to to kind of shade it. As we're talking about it. As normal, we got the movie on mute in the background. We've already seen it. Um, but just kind of pay attention. Oh, there's, yeah. there's a few few spots. Alright, you want to get into the movie? I'm out of pre, pre-facts. You out of pre-facts? Yeah, I got more coming, though. I'm locked and loaded. <laughs> yes, so many checks. <laughs> yeah, you're out of pre-com, but you got more in the chamber? Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> So, but okay, another prefact. Okay. So in the beginning of the opening credits, somewhere through there, you know, music written and performed by Prince. Mm-hmm. The entire goddamn I, soundtrack. Yeah, but I was always thinking that they were Prince songs already. They were not. No. He... I think with the exception of one song, yeah. other than the other than background the Batman, track. Well, other than the Batman theme at the beginning. Other than that, and then like some of the orchestral mm-hmm. tracks for the soundtrack. He right. did everything. Yeah. And they did, because Warner Brothers uh, had his him under contract. And they, I guess they came to some deal, but it was on Billboard charts for like six weeks. Yeah. Number one. Mm-hmm. Now, Danny Elfman did all of the... Other stuff. Instrumental stuff. And he does everything. Every movie we've watched, he's... Oh, yeah, 100%. But good. he thought he was going to be fired. He didn't think they would like the Batman theme he came up with that plays over the opening credits. Which is fucking fire. Like, it's just the Batman theme now. But he didn't think anybody would like it. He thought he was going to be fired for sure. Can you fire somebody after they do the work? Sure. Pay him, fire him, get somebody else. I mean, you can fire me as long as you you pay me. Mm-hmm. That's, that seems like a pretty good deal. All right. <laughs> so, um. we get into the movie. It opens up on kind of a... If, if you're familiar with the Batman story, you kind of think you're watching Little Bruce and his parents. Other than the fact, and because I thought it was Bruce and his parents... And I was like, they're not dressed or acting wealthy enough. (laughs) And then when it turned out to just be another family and a little boy, I had to cross it out. But But it's like a present day family. Kind of just an allusion to the fact that this same thing had happened to Bruce. Right, but the family gets robbed and Batman jumps in and he doesn't stop it. Yeah, he doesn't stop it. He doesn't stop it at all. He comes in I, after the fact and, like, strings up the robbers, but... So, I mean, I guess they could have got their money back that way. But I there was a couple of problems that I didn't know I had with this movie until tonight. Yeah. 
I got some facts about that too. Because we had we looked at each other at the same time. I was like, huh, interesting. We didn't even have to look at each other. I just started writing. I said, well, and you're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, probably the only product placement was the guy had an American Express card in his wallet and one of the robbers was like American Express don't go home without it you are incorrect and I've been so excited about this fun fact this is a fun fact just for you baby what are you ready because this is a product placement fun fact Uh oh so John Peters who was the producer wanted a product placement deal with Nike and Nike was like you bet so the shoes Batman wears as Batman are black Nike Air Trainers. You can't tell. You never see them. You wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. I knew. I looked. Still couldn't tell. But if you can't tell, then it wasn't there. It's not really a product placement. No. But, but the movie and Nike came to a deal to have all this Nike product placement on Batman. Now... I mean, I was alive during this movie, but, you know, not old enough to, like, pay a fucking attention. I don't know if there was, like, Batman Nike commercials. You would think if they had some kind of deal. Or what, but, yeah. Like, I'm going to try to pay attention again. And look at his shoes. <laughs> but they, he's like, Merry Express, don't leave home without it. And then you get the famous, I'm Batman. Batman. Um... Well, they're talking on the roof. He's like, I don't like being up this high. He's like, why, dude? He's like, the bat. The Batman's gonna get us. He got our friends. And Batman kind of tosses a couple of them off the building and then strings one up. There were only two. And he was like, tell your friends. He's like, tell them what? He's like, I'm Batman. <laughs> he just wants them to say, hey, stop doing bad shit. You know? Uh, then you you meet Jack, who turns out to be... First, you meet Harvey Dent. Lando Calrissian. That's right. <laughs> so you meet Jack. Now, Jack Napier. I had a hard time with this. Because this was my first Batman movie. So this is Joker for me. This is my Joker source material. I don't think there's another... There's something that has him as Arthur, right? In the new Joker movie, he's Arthur. Arthur Fleck. Arthur Fleck, okay. But I went back and looked. I asked people who were more knowledgeable about it than me. He's He doesn't have a name in the comic books. They never name him. Um, they came up with Jack Napier after Alan Napier, who played Alfred in the 1960 TV show. But I like that show. Jack Napier and his his origin story and all that is is my my Joker, and when they change it, it hurts my feelings. My Joker is Heath Ledger. No, see, in Batman Begins, when somebody else killed Bruce Wayne's parents, I was offended, and I know that somebody else killed Bruce Wayne's parents in the comic books. I looked that up too. I'm just saying. This was my source material. It's what I clung to. <laughs> well, most people do. Whatever the first... Like, the first... Whatever Doctor Who episodes you first start watching, if you end up liking it, mm -hmm. that becomes... Your Doctor. Your Doctor. Right. I don't when know I, if that's true about you, though. It. When I think of Doctor Who... Most of the, I would say 80% of the time it's David Tennant. The other 20 is the one before him, nine. Because that's where Chris Netflix. Eccleson? Yeah, that's where Netflix starts. Ten, David Tennant was my first doctor. And then I backed up and watched the other ones. But I can remember it. I mean, this isn't a Doctor Who podcast, but I'm telling the fucking story anyway. I can remember it. It was the Doctor Who Christmas special when nine turned into ten. And I watched it at Dad's and I was so very confused as to why none of these people who were this man's friends recognized him 
why they were all acting this way, why this man in his pajamas was just crashed out, why the Christmas tree came alive and was spinning. He was in and a was suit. Like, he was not in pajamas. They put him in pajamas. Are you sure? Yeah. Bitch. Really? <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> and I, I was so confused, and I was like, Dad, this is the worst show I've ever seen in my whole goddamn life, and now I'm pretty sure it's my favorite TV show. <laughs> okay, let's get back on track. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, um, Jack is fucking the crime boss's girlfriend. Now, this isn't just a crime boss. It is the boss. He's the boss of all the families right. of the city. So, there's Grissom. around that table, there was like eight or nine of them. And Grissom was the head, like CEO. Like, mm-hmm. everything ran through him. Right. And then all the other bosses were like vice presidents of their area. Right. And Jack felt the need to bang his girlfriend. You just, that is a, a situation that you avoid. Well, the girlfriend said if he found out, he would kill you. And he was like, don't flatter yourself. He's like, I'm his number one guy. You're just a girl. And I was like, mm. Yeah. I don't know, buddy. Now, I don't think for those type of people, people and like in shit. this movie, we'll get to it, but the guy who played Grissom played him as not the way that the person who gets to be there doesn't act like that. He would have killed Jack <laughs> for the simple fact that he took something that wasn't his. It wouldn't have been about the girl, his girlfriend or wife, whatever she was. It would have been about, that was my property, and you disobeyed me it's about it's a power struggle it's, it has right. nothing to do with that yeah. so yeah he's uh doing the dirty with her yeah and, and he, he doesn't even treat her well either so no. i don't even know why like, he's with she's with him. she's like he's like fixing himself in the mirror and she puts her hand on his shoulder was like you look great he's like i didn't ask you and then looks at her hand until she moves it and then just looks at her in disgust like i think he's just doing it for the thrill of being able to do it the forbidden like fruit. Like he's got some shit to prove. Yep. Yeah. So then you meet Vicky Vale. Is it Kim Basinger? Nope. Yep. <laughs> E40. <laughs> Everybody got choices. So she's a just hot blonde photographer lady. She... Oh, she st- she was in the newsroom she when showed up at the newsroom to see Knox because he's been investigating this Batman yeah. story. Knox Nobody is... believes him. Is it Alexander Knox? And yeah, I have no idea. I think they. Just I think it's him Alexander Knox. Knox, but he is a reporter for the Gotham newspaper. Uh-huh. He is trying to figure out. Like he's heard the rumors of the Bat, the Batman. He's piecing it together. He he thinks it's real. Everybody else is making fun of him for it. But she she shows up. Him. She's a photographer. Um, she says with her photos and his story, they could win a Pulitzer. Yeah. Well, he he initially thought somebody set him up because she's gorgeous and believes him. Said something about Batman, and nobody <laughs> else in the whole building believes him. Yeah. So they come up with a plan to. Uh, why Why did they want to go to Bruce Wayne's party or his fundraiser? Somebody was going to be there that they wanted to interview. Oh, uh... Gordon. Gordon, yeah. Okay. Commissioner Gordon was going to be there and he said he won't answer my calls. That's why. Yeah. She had an invitation. I don't even know why. She had an invitation. Because she's high society in that city. Speaking of, okay, this bitch is a photographer Mm -hmm. in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. She is very young. Mm Mm-hmm. The only photographers I know that make money are older ones. Like, she's not who have like a wedding. A she's not like a wedding photographer. Still, she's like she's like a Did reporter. you see her she, apartment? She's like a reporter. Like she's out like shooting war and shit. Did you see? I, so like you're the saying the apartment was fully furnished when she rented it, and I can tell you this because the same decorations that were in her apartment were in the hallway. Still, that apartment had like twenty foot high ceilings. So she had money. That's like 
What is she like the Anderson Cooper of this movie? She okay, old well, money. We're gonna go with this money struggle here. Later, when Batman Bruce Wayne digs up shit about his parents, the clipping says prominent doctor and wife slain. Bitch, you. I, I know doctors. I'm friends with doctors. None of them have that fucking what if, mansion. What if they didn't mean physician? What if they just meant what doctor yeah. of money? Pretty much. Like, in all the other movies, he's always been, like, this, like, tycoon into, like, industry and property and it's real estate. Like... He's never been a goddamn doctor. I think just in 1989, doctor was, like, the highs they could go. And they were he like, was... let's make him a doctor. I would say most people could relate to Tony Stark's father, Howard Stark. Had a lot. Of, it was in a lot of shit. And then had the secret research and development. Right. That you don't really know about until later. All right, I just, I can't buy a doctor. Anyway. But, okay, so Grissom knows what's up with Jack and... He does. What's the girl's name? Alicia. Alicia. And they... They're worried about Harvey Dent connecting them with this chemical plant uh, that is going to kind of take down their whole criminal enterprise. Right. So, they're coming up, like, what should they do, blah, blah, blah. Well, Jack has a good idea. It's like, he was like, why don't we just tear up the place, take all the records, and just say it was corporate espionage and they they were trying to steal from us. Um, Or Axis Chemicals would say that. Right. And he's like, you know what, that's a good idea. And I guess he got in his mind, like, I want you to personally do it, because he's going to set... You can tell from the get-go, he's setting Jack up for something. Mm-hmm. Jack leaves. He actually kind of protests. He's like, you can have somebody else do this. And he was like, no, I want you personally to oversee it. You're my number one guy. Right. right. So As soon as he leaves, he calls this Lieutenant Eckerd. Eckhart, whatever. Dirty cop. Who you've already seen in the movie, Jack was paying him off. He was delivering money from Grissom. And tells him, you know, this is where he's going to be. This is what he wants you to do. So when Jack goes to the chemical plant to rob it, they break into the safe. Nothing's there. And they're like, immediately, we've been set up. And they're trying to get out. And Napier, or Eckerd. Lieutenant Eckerd shows up with all these cops. who He's like showing all the cops. He's like, this is the guy. Shoot to kill. Yeah, because they, they just want him dead. Right. So he knows he's set up. And the cops come running in. And Jack just fucking starts pushing buttons and pulling levers and turning valves. Gets an axe and <laughs> like starts slamming into vats that say caution, do not touch. It's and I guess you could you could argue that he knew what he was doing. But it definitely looked like he didn't know what he was doing. He right. looked like a toddler with a Fisher Price button set, mm-hmm. just pounding away. Oh, he didn't know what he was doing. But you could argue that he was turning everything on to spill stuff and create distractions and obstacles for other people to get in the way. But Um, in the meantime, Police Chief Gordon has found out about what's going on. He's at Wayne's fundraiser, which we'll just circle back to in a minute. Oh, I was kidding. Um, He finds out about it, and he takes off and goes, and he was like, Absolutely nobody shooted him. I want him alive. If you, if I see a single person shoot at him, you'll have me to answer to. But that doesn't seem to stop the cops. Like, they are still hardcore trying to shoot him. Yeah, it's open firing range inside this chemical yeah, plant. Yeah, it seems bad all the way around. Like, you go to a chemical plant, I would say 90% of those things are flammable. flammable. Yeah. It may not be highly flammable. Which I have a point about here in a second. <laughs> but they are at least a little flammable. Yeah. But Batman comes, he sees Gordon leave his party, so he kind of follows him. He comes, he gets... Well, about that... We'll circle back to the party, just... Well, it was about Alfred. Alfred's like, hey, uh, Bruce, uh, Commissioner Gordon left. He's like, okay, well, he was talking to Vivian yeah. and Knox. And he's like, oh, he's... And Gordon... Or Alfred's like, uh, he left really quickly, unexpectedly, now. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And he tries to excuse himself. He's like, maybe the back way? Yeah, like, Alfred's really running this shit. Yeah. If, if there was no Alfred, there was no Batman. No. Like. Not at all. Alfred's always been one of my favorite parts of Batman. He's really amazing his, in Gotham. His secret. Show. Yeah. 
We need to finish that. Though. They're actually he has a whole. There's a whole Alfred show coming out. Like he. He's very James Bondish, not because he's English, but he's. But it don't hurt. Always, he always knows what to do, when to do it, and how to get it done when other people don't want it done. Yeah. Like he knows how to he knows how to manipulate Bruce, and he doesn't do it in a bad way because most people, when you think of manipulation, right. it's bad. He manipulates Bruce to kind of steer him in the right direction. He has a real father son relationship. Yeah. Yeah. But Batman shows up. He picks up Jack. Jack's bottom bitch, Bob. <laughs> bottom bitch, Bob. <laughs> yes. Pulls, bottom bitch, Bob. Triple B. Pulls out a gun and holds it to Commissioner Gordon's head. And was like, I'll shoot him if you don't let him go. So he lets him go. All of his people run away. Jack picks up a gun. He's going to shoot Gordon. Like, just fucking run away, bitch. And Batman kind of pushes him. And he catches him, but he can't hold on and he falls into the vat of acid. No, 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 no. Batman, he, he was going to shoot Gordon first. Then Batman comes in. Yeah. Gets Jack. That's, what I that's when Bottom Bitch Bob comes in. The but second after time. He lets him go. He picks the up the second time gun. he's going to shoot Eckerd. He does. He does shoot Eckerd. Yeah. He does shoot him. Now, that's when the. Right. After that's when the struggle yeah. happens. He shoots. Batman blocks the bullet, it ricochets off a pipe, and that's what causes, he's got like, I think an entry in the exit wound, (laughs) is what it looked like, for the corners of the smile, Mm -hmm. and he falls into the vat. Mm -hmm. Um, Then you have the... The cops, like, the cops all put their gun on Batman, and here's my issue... He takes a smoke bomb and throws it and disappears in the smoke. Again, not a great plan in a chemical plant. I mean, it's just smoke. But there has to be some kind of spark to set it off. He was getting... Don't seem great. So, you have the... To finish up that part of the the scene, Mm -hmm. they keep going back and forth a little bit, you have the 1980s horror hand. Out of the drain, yeah, the drain ways out of the chemical plant into the river or whatever it was draining into, and you can see his skin's all white and his nails are green, and he's just holding it there like crooked, like Jason popping up out of the ground. Mm-hmm. All right, do you want to talk about right, Bruce let's go Wayne's back to Bruce Wayne's fundraiser? So Vivian, Vicky, Vicky Vale. I called her Vivian earlier. I love. So much that you refuse to get anybody's name right. <laughs> hey, Bottom Bitch Bob is always Bottom Bitch Bob for now on. I was that very was a proud. good one. That was a good. I was one. very proud of my alliteration. Now, did you come up with that while your notes? Mm-hmm. Oh, or okay. Yeah. So it's on page three. <laughs> Vicky Vale and Knox are at the party. You can tell they're they're looking for Bruce. Yeah, Knox is real out of place. Yeah. He tips Alfred. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Um, so, Vicky pats some guy on the shoulder. He turns around. She's like, hey, can you tell me which one of these guys is Bruce Wayne? And it is Bruce. And he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. And it, it, Bruce just kind of watches her. And then she beats back up with Knox. And they end up going to this. It's like a weapons collection, armor collection. Which the armor part kind of does make sense for Bruce Wayne and Batman. Right. He had all these different sets of armor. One of them, I don't know, was real. They seemed like from different places in the world and different time periods. That one that looked like a matchstick nose. I want to know where that one was from. I wondered if some of them, because some of them looked real hokey. I wondered if some of them were like throwback to comic book characters or something. Could have been. Maybe not comic book Because that one had like a gas mask looking thing and like a hose wrapped around it. And I'm, that's the one made me wonder. So, but the funny part is Bruce Wayne kind of follows behind him and they're just kind of talking shit. They like, talk mad shit. And he, he's just kind of, <laughs> just keep a pace with him. And he's, you can tell he's, he's infatuated with Vicky. 
So one of them ends up looking at like the one of the samurais. Mm-hmm. Um, Knox says something. He's like, actually, it's from Japan. And he's like, how do you know? He's like, because I, I bought, bought it, it in, in Japan. Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so then they meet Bruce Wayne. They figure out who he is. He said, hi, I'm Bruce Wayne. And she said, really? Are you sure? <laughs> he's like, this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when Gordon comes in and kind of. No, Alfred. Alfred comes in. And lets him know about Commissioner Gordon. Well, Knox straight up says, oh, you're Bruce Wayne. Can I have a grand? Grant. I couldn't tell if he said Grant or Grand. Grant. I thought it was Grant, but then at the end when Bruce Wayne says it, I thought he said Grant. He wanted a grant so that he could use the money to research writing whatever he wanted. Yeah. So, but... It, but Alfred comes in and he's like, okay, they need champagne and this needs to happen and wine and give him his grant and do this and do that. Yeah. Well, one of them and was leaves. like, Miss So-and-so needs to see a menu, blah, blah, uh-huh. blah. And that's when you learn, like, at least in this movie, Bruce is not like some little rich asshole. Like, he is very attentive to his guests and making sure they have what they need. But he leaves and there's like a two-way mirror they're looking at. And they're still just talking shit about him. Like, <laughs> he just gave you a bunch of money. They're still just talking shit about him. Alright, so after all this nonsense. Oh, here's my issue. I don't know if this is 1989. There's no internet. But she's a photographer. You know, she knows other photographers. She knows news outlets, newspapers. The dude works for the newspaper. Bruce Wayne is a prominent figure in Gotham. Have there been no pictures published of him in the newspaper? Because she has no idea who Bruce Wayne is. She asked Bruce Wayne who Bruce Wayne is. Like, fucking flaw. They had to have seen a picture of Bruce Wayne at some point. He had to have been in the news. She was a visitor to Gotham. Still, Knox should have known who he was. They all should have known who he was. Because Knox didn't know either when he snuck up behind him. True. But you could argue that, in at least in this movie, Bruce is kind of... More aloof. I get that. But he's, but he's at not, some point... He's, he's not making speeches and he's not out in front of But him. at some point he's donated money to something. Some kind of charity fund. Like, this 20th or 200th cel- anniversary celebration of Gotham fundraiser is enough to get his picture in the newspaper. So... That Knox works for. I just find it ridiculous. Sorry. But in this... Not so much in the other Batman movies because you see... A lot of his fundraiser work, he's up in front of the crowd giving a speech, you know, give money for this and that. This one, Bruce seems more like the laid back, kind of like, everybody knows of Bruce Wayne, but nobody knows who Bruce Wayne is. I guess. Like, like everybody, everybody's got like some person in their town they know has money or whatever, and everybody knows of that person. And nobody knows who that person is. And chances are they've probably talked to that person if it's a small enough place and just didn't fucking know it. Fair enough, I guess. Um, so that's when Batman goes to the chemical plant all that shit we already talked about. Yeah. So then we go to... Vicky Vale has a date with Bruce Wayne. She comes over for dinner... In her little Chevy hatchback to this mansion and has dinner with Bruce at a 30 foot long dinner table. And Bruce decided to set them the well, opposite of the long way. They're like yelling at each other. And she's like, hey. <laughs> and you can tell she's like, can you pass the salt? He's like, like, sure. And he wipes his mouth and puts his napkin down and walks it but down to her. I don't even think she wanted the salt. She was like, can you pass the salt? Like, this is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, she like, was just trying to make I don't know point. why they didn't sit at the end well, of the table at this the short way. 30-foot table, there are six chairs. There are two at the, like, one on each end and then four in the middle. I think, do you think rich people need a lot of elbow room? Like, do you think they, they're they not really dainty like everybody thinks they are? And they know. just fucking go at it like wolves? Maybe. <laughs> but she says, do you like eating in here? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. Actually, I don't know that I've ever been in this room. He's like, do you want to get out of here? And they go eat in the kitchen with Alfred. Yeah. Which looks like a much more, like... 
comforting world. place. Yeah. Yeah. First date or any date, that dining room was going to make somebody very uncomfortable. Yeah. Also, in his small talk while they're still at the long table, he asked if she had any trouble finding the house. Like, motherfucker, <laughs> this is her second time there in two days. Now, I'm pretty sure she knew how to get there. Also, it's the fucking lone mansion in this fucking dilapidated city. So, you see that mountain that actually is a, a house that does not resemble a mountain at all? You're like, yeah, like, just go in that direction. Yeah, you know, where you were <laughs> yesterday. And then... So, so they're talking and Alfred's telling stories, whatever. But that, that kitchen looks like a place where a lot of people have had, like, the after party that was a lot more fun than the actual event. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it cuts to old Jack getting patched up by Dr. Nick in a back alley <laughs> warehouse. Like Dr. Nick. <laughs> I don't know what insurance plan Jack had, but uh, well, his HMO was shit. He had he had to go <laughs> somewhere where the police wouldn't find him because he's presumed dead. Um, so old Doctor Nick does what he can, and you get it like he's all banded. Jack's all bandaged up, his hands, his head, but he has a suit on. Mm-hmm. The chemical plant has turned to Sue Purple. But his skin has turned white. And he's got the uh, the smile. So he gets unbandaged. He asks for a mirror. And the doc's trying to explain. He's like, look, listen, the, ner- the nerves were dead. They were completely severed, blah, blah, blah. Jack sees his face and he starts just laughing uncontrollably. And that's like the, the moment he starts to go insane. Yeah. Very impressed he didn't kill the doctor. Yeah. But his first stop is to his old pal, Grissom. Grissom. He's like, you set me up over a woman. Yeah. And this is where I said, like, he doesn't act like he's all nervous and shaky. Like, if you're if you're in that position, and he's obviously an older guy, mm-hmm. you've lived that long, you either, you're going to fight. With no hesitation. Well, he tries to get to his gun. Or you're going to... But on the the reason he doesn't get to his gun is because of the way he was yeah. trembling and shivering. And like, Jack those people said, aren't scared to die. Jack was like, there's not even a point. And he just stops. Like, I'd have fucking attempted there to be a point. Yeah. yeah. But if... I think at that point, he still has a chance. But most people in those situations, when they know they don't have a chance... Like, um, Marlo. When Marlo Stanfield come to Prop Joe's house, Prop, and as soon as he saw Marlo, mm-hmm. he knew it was done. Like, he knew he had no chance, so he, he didn't tremble, he didn't shake, he didn't cry about it. He, that's how that man would have acted. I thought it was weird that he was all nervous and twitchy. Well, he wasn't just being killed, he was being killed by this fucking goddamn clown. <laughs> Maybe he was just scared of clowns. He was still pretty dark. Well, he, he, he didn't really Jack, do. and Jack steps out of the shadows, and he's like, Jack is dead. You can call me the Joker. As you can see, I'm a lot happier. I was disappointed he still didn't have his cards with him after that. Well, his lucky deck that he's playing with, the Joker has a bullet hole through it. So I'm assuming it stopped a bullet at some point, but I kind of wanted a backstory to that. But no, whatever. <laughs> So, Jack kills Grissom in the wildest, um, look like one of those drunk redneck shooting videos <laughs> where he's just, like, putting it behind his back and <laughs> between his legs and over, like, over his face he's and doing, around his he's neck. He's trick shots. Uh, Meanwhile, old Bruce got lucky. Yeah, and Alfred is not a good wingman. Uh, well. He didn't read, like, she was like. She asked Bruce, Vicky asked Bruce to By come to lunch. morning after. To come to lunch. She wanted to show him some pictures or whatever. Uh, to, at her apartment. And she was like, he was like, wait, I can't do that then. She was like, all right, what about dinner? And he's like, no, I can't. I can't do it today. Mm-hmm. He was like, um, he throws out, I'm, I'm leaving town for First a First he days. had a meeting and then he was going to go out of town for a few days. Yeah. So she's like, okay, I'll see you when I get back. And she walks downstairs and she tells Alfred, 
you know, it was nice meeting you. I'll see you when you get back. And he was like, what? We're going to be here for quite some time. And she's like, I'll do that. But Alfred, like any other dude, would have been like, just like, okay, thank you. I don't think it's limited to a dude. I think... Any other person. Any other person. Like, like if somebody's been in the room talking to your friend, and they come out and say some shit that don't make sense, you're just like, yeah, absolutely. And, and then, then you go like, hey, like, Bruce, what are you up to? What the fuck did I just agree to? <laughs> so. I have a review for that that I think you really gonna like. <laughs> so this is where you the Joker is meeting with all the other, uh, I guess, families. smaller bosses. And all their crime families. And it kind of says now, that Grissom has given him power. He has put foundation on his face. To make himself look normal. To make himself have a normal skin tone. And I swear to God, his face is scarier with a normal skin tone than it is <laughs> fucking white. Yeah, because it's... When he has that smile, you expect something. The white is already off, so the smile is off. So it kind of... Two things are off, they kind of go It's together. a little more calming. Yeah. But when it's flesh toned it's yeah. real upsetting. and it was it was weird that they kind of went through the effort to to make sure you knew that he had done that like mm -hmm. it is very over the top like instagram model like oh, it's way too much coverage. makeup it's a, he used that face <laughs> tape he, it's full coverage what my bitches know you say face tape yeah do you put tape on your face no, it's a brand. It's it's by Tarte. It's face mm. tape concealer. First they came out with the face tape concealer. And then they came out with the face tape foundation. And he used a lot of it. Why do they call it face tape? Nobody knows and everybody thinks it's stupid. And why, why are they I named also, after a okay. dessert? Huh? Why are they named after a dessert? How is it named after a dessert? Tarte. What's T-A-R-T-E? Oh, that doesn't make a difference to me. So it's not like... Tarte. That's not like the dessert. It's... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You're just making shit up. At this point. <laughs> so, anyway... Why is it named after a dessert? Why is it named after anything? Old Jack Napier and his uh, foundation is setting spray. <laughs> yeah. He used that yeah. Urban Decay all-nighter. Which is probably just he, fucking water. He does not use that all-nighter setting spray because he dabs he his forehead dead. with his hanky and all of it comes off. He needed that all-nighter in his life. I, Thank you for tuning into my makeup podcast. <laughs> my name is Sarah. I thought I liked that scene, but I also liked in The Dark Knight where Heath Ledger kind of does the same thing as like an homage to that scene, only a lot fucking crazier. Um, but he comes in and says, you know, Grissom, Grissom, put me in charge. Like, what, they're like, why aren't we hearing from Grissom? Mm -hmm. Well, he like, clearly says he's dead. He was like, if he ever surfaces again. Yeah. Uh, and one guy's like, well, what if we don't want to agree to it? And he's like, well, I don't, nobody wants a war. We'll just shake hands, blah, blah, blah. And he shakes his hand. He has one of those buzzers, which apparently has the largest amount of electricity in it. Per, per it, little area. It was not a joy buzzer. It was a... I had a problem, though. Skin doesn't melt before clothes catch on fire. <laughs> well, this thing has but, a lot of physics problems, if you ask me. Yeah. But he used him as an example. Everybody else kind of just falls in line. But to make sure all those people fall in line, as all this happens... Old Bottom Hitch Bob and his goons <laughs> come in just to make sure everybody mm -hmm. is orderly. They come in with the biggest guns right in people's face. He makes a deal with them and they leave. And he's talking to the guy he fried. And he was like, you think I should give him a chance or you think I should go ahead and kill him now? Go ahead and kill him all now? Boy, you're an evil son of a bitch. I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> yeah, he... Uh... <laughs> so after that... Um, Vicky Vale follows Bruce Wayne. Well, she goes to the newspaper and she's looking for his file. And he has a file, but there's like nothing in it. 
no pictures, no articles, which again, I think no, is no, no. bullshit. She followed him first, then went to... No. I promise. I have it down. There's no photos or info, info about him in the file, so she just starts following him. She follows him. He has the flowers. She follows him around the corner. And he lays the flowers where, spoiler alert, his parents were murdered. Um, she continues to follow him. They go to City Hall, where all the mobsters are on the front steps Let's having a damn press conference. Back, back to the flowers. Okay. You're following some dude. Uh-huh. He comes to a place. He has a very solemn yeah. few moments. He lays roses down on the ground. Has another couple moments of silence. And does whatever he does, and he walks away. Uh-huh. Do you pick up the fucking flowers and look at them? She was investigating. No. no. Disrespectful bitch. <laughs> she was investigating. Disrespectful. She didn't take them with her. But she still, like, I wouldn't, you don't, like, see somebody down in the cemetery, like, oh, they put flowers in, you pick them up and kind of look at them, like, huh, and then put them back. Like, even though you put them back, it, it's disrespectful. I, so anyway, she lightly touches these flowers, which apparently made you mad. And then she follows him to City Hall, where the mobsters are all having a press conference. About how this guy's going to take over all of Grissom's business. So he was the guy sitting the opposite end of the Joker when they were up there. Now, I guess the Joker was in on this whole, or knew about this whole coup they were planning. Right. Because he has moms everywhere, bottom yeah, bitch bob. killer moms. Uh, he strolls up and... Jabs a quill right into that dude's neck. Well, Knox is asking questions, and he was like, how can this be verified? And the Joker comes up, and he was like, I can verify it. I saw the whole thing. Grissom rose up from the grave and signed his name in blood. This is the pen he used. And it was like this Joker collared quill, and he just kind of darts it through this dude's neck, and then all of the moms open fire. Everybody hits the deck except for Bruce Wayne, who's just standing there all hardcore and shit. Which is Vicky Vale's first indication that this man might not be okay. He was... It took me a second to realize that it was... He was in disbelief because he thought Jack was dead and he is... He was... He recognized him. Mm-hmm. And he follows him to the car in disbelief and at the car he realizes, like, he's got a 100% yeah. ID on this guy. So he knows he's still alive. Right. Which is when poor Vicky Vale runs up to him and is like, Bruce, and grabs him and he just turns around and walks the fuck away. Which wasn't a commentary on her. He was just so... Kind of in a trance. Confused like, at everything that just happened and that this guy he killed was alive. Oh, so back, yeah. to, back to Bottom Bitch Bob. Uh-huh. And the joke. Uh-huh. So... The time, you don't really know the time frame of falling into the vat versus this little shindig. But the, at most, the day before this press conference happened, he tells Bottom Bitch Bob to go to the newspaper, look up Knox and Vicky Vale, figure out what, to see what they know know about. about Vicky Vale. He knows he, that she's a photographer. He tells her to follow Knox. Oh. Bottom and Bitch Bob finds out about Vicky Vale. He takes and she's a, a picture photographer. of her and the Joker is infatuated with her. So, Bottom Bitch Bob is taking pictures there. Mm-hmm. But in the meeting, if you can call it a two person thing, a meeting where he tells Bottom Bitch Bob to go, go figure out what Knox knows about the bat. He has a big ass Joker logo on his jacket. Yes. Uh, also, they have, have, like, who is the Joker's merch people? Yes, all of them later have giant, like, comic book style jackets. Jokers on their jackets. Uh, well, they've had time to paint their cars purple and green. The they got a goddamn Joker helicopter. Yeah. Like, so he's got merch people, mm-hmm. and he's got a, a hell of a good PR person. Mm-hmm. He's got a seamstress on speed dial. But at the end of that, Jennifer's like, "Give me the phone book." And he, are there, is there a deleted well, scene with this phone book? Hold on. 
Hooker's at home watching the news of what happened at City Hall, and they're blaming Batman. And he gets mad, and he's like, he like punches out the TV. He's like, how does he get all of my news, all of my press clippings? He's like, this town needs an enema. Then, Bottom Bitch Bob shows him the pictures of Vicky Vale. And he says, get me the phone book, because he's going to look up her number. Oh, and okay. as Bruce Wayne schedule a date at the museum because she calls Alfred and leaves a message saying she's going to be 10 minutes late to the museum. He calls Bruce Wayne and tells him and he's like, oh, okay, wait, I'm not supposed to meet her there. So then it cuts to the action news broadcast and there's, they start talking about these two models that have died and they died Stop. of this. We have got to talk about what this bitch is wearing. She has on a blazer that has the biggest lapels I've ever seen in my life. It's like 1970s style giant lapels, but like 1980s shoulder pads on steroids. Like... It could have fit Lawrence Taylor. Which is the Bennett brothers with the tiny little shoulder pads? Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett shoulder pads are smaller than than the shoulder pads she's wearing in her blazer. I'm convinced that he te- he does not wear the outer shell. He wears like the practice shoulder pads for like the non-contact drills. I don't even know. But her shoulder pads, like she could go out on the football field right now and be perfectly protected. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. So she... Um, They're talking about all these women that have Talked died. about the two models that died of some kind of anaphylactic allergic reaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, they both have the smiles on their face. Well, the other anchor starts talking. He's talking about deaths of some other people. And she starts giggling. Like, she gets the church giggles and can't stop. She falls out of her chair. She's just laying there with the, the Joker smile. Right. And then the Joker cuts into the news broadcast and starts talking about how there's a new ingredient called Smiley. And it's in all of your products. And you probably already own it. So, the Joker sets up Vicky Vale. Like you mentioned, she had called Bruce. Um, Alfred's like, hey, Vicky says she's going to be 10 minutes late. And I, Bruce's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And that clues Bruce in, like, hey, something's, something's not right. So, Vicky shows up at the museum, which has a restaurant, apparently. Goes to the table, waits for a long time. She gets a present that is marked urgent in crayon, in red crayon. Yes. Tim Burton wrote the notes on the present. He wrote the urgent and the put this on right now. Um, Even though it looks like a five-year-old did it. <laughs> probably wanted it to look that yeah. way. So, it's a- she kind of looks around a little bit, sees... People falling out, passing mm-hmm. out. So she holds the mask. Right. I don't even think you said that she opened it and that it was a bright orange gas mask. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> but you said put this on. Still. So Joker shows up. He's defacing all this artwork, breaking shit. Um, shows up with his boombox. Jamming out the prints. Uh, to... Almost kind of recruit her a little bit. Or to, as the old folks would say, court her. Woo. He's wooing her. <laughs> I love all of Joker's henchmen. Like, we've watched a fair amount of the 1960 Batman show with Dad. Yeah. And the Joker always just has his henchmen with just the shirts that sometimes will say, like, random names on them, and sometimes they just say henchmen. Yeah. <laughs> so, Vicky gets a little freaked out by his art project on Alicia, which looks like she's well, just tossed the acid in her face. We should say that he is, again, got the shape tape on. He's got his foundation on so he looks like a human terrifying human he tells her that he is the world's 
first fully functioning homicidal artist. And then he brings in Alicia. And she's wearing a mask. And she's like, why does she have on the mask? He's like, well, she's my first project. She's kind of a rough sketch. And he, she takes the mask off and he's like acided half of her face. But she's also clearly on something. Yeah, she's very sedated. Yeah, she's she's fucked up. He gets her up against this pillar and he's like, take a whiff of my my flower. And she ducks as he tries to spray acid in her face. And here's my whole issue with her. She gets away. She throws water on his face. Yeah. He pretends like it hurts and he's melting. And she's going to help. I'd have kicked him in his nuts. Instead of running or finishing the job, she's like, oh no. Oh no, are you let me okay? help you. She's like holding him and patting his back like, the fuck are you doing, bitch? And then Batman comes like to the window. Like he tried to just acid your face. Like, if it really hurt him, good. Hurt him some more. If it didn't, let's Baker get away and run. See, I had a problem with her trying to help him. Because he's obviously a psychopath. And she should not have tried to help no. him. No! Uh, so Batman comes to the rescue because of that whole message. So he knew where she was going to be. He knew something was wrong. He breaks through the skylight. Zip lines her up. Gets her outside. He's like He tells her to get in the car. And you see the Batmobile for the first time. Now, the Batmobile is the most con- conspicuous car that anybody has ever seen. I feel like, and I've always felt this way, Batman would not drive that car. Why do you hate fun? I don't hate fun. <laughs> he needs something fast. He needs something fast, but I think if there was a real life... Bruce Wayne had all the money in the world. He would have more like the James Bond car. He would drive a Tesla. He would drive a Tesla. He, speaking of, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, I know Bruce Wayne. He drives a fucking Tesla. <laughs> anyway, I feel like Elon Musk was a fan of Batman because Batmobile has a summon feature. So... If there was a real Batman, he would have more of a James Bond type car that has a lot of things that pop out of it that are not normal. But when if it was parked on the street, it would be one of those cars nobody messes with because it doesn't look like anything special. So does that mean that you don't care that this particular incarnation of the Batmobile was designed by Anton first and was built on an Impala chassis? No, it looks cool as shit, though. I'm not okay. Not that. I'm pretty I sure like I had a few of them. The Joker cars are all purple with the green top and they have Christmas lights in the back yeah. window. <laughs> but they have a high speed chase through the streets and just absolutely fuck up Gotham. So as <laughs> Batman saves Vicky, is in the process of saving her, he... What would you call this right here? He grapples her up to this uh, scaffolding between these two buildings. He asks her how much she weighs. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know, about 108, I think. And then they get halfway up and stop. And he's like, God damn it, bitch. He's (laughs) like, take the thing off my belt. Don't let go. So she flies up. He drops down. He drops down as Joker henchman car pulls up and they're kicking his ass. They shoot him a couple times and hits the body armor. Now, she climbs up on the scaffolding, and as the henchmen are about to take his mask off, she pictures. takes the pictures and they see the flash. Now, option one, she did it to distract him and save his identity, or option two, she just wanted to know who he was and wanted a picture of him unmasked. Which do you think? Both. If... I think it was solely for herself. She wanted that picture. The distraction was purely coincidental. Yeah, I would like to think that she knew or not. Like, she was a photographer. She knew enough about her camera and her flash that it would make a noise. The fly, the light would distract them. You would like to think that. But I, it also didn't seem like she did it for that reason. Yeah, when they looked up and started shooting at her, she seemed real surprised. <laughs> But they start shooting at her, and he gives him time to jump up and kick everybody's ass. 
And he gets her and he's like, you're a little heavier than 108. <laughs> it's like, damn, bitch. So, he summons the Batmobile, drives her to the Batcave, which is kind of risky itself. Like, Well, we had to, excuse me, he had to give her the list the combination of which products you couldn't use with which products because in the meantime here, Gotham just hasn't been using any toiletry items, so everybody's stinky as shit. The news anchors look like they haven't had a bath in three days. Everybody's hair's crazy. They got acne all over them. So he needed a reporter to get out this list. It's kind of like a third world or a first world problem, right? Like, Being stinky? Like that's the bougiest... This is the bougiest Batman problem <laughs> that he had to solve. Like, okay, you people can take a bath now. <laughs> I guess. So, he gives her the file with all the combinations of stuff you said. Right. He's, he wants her to take it to the press. She's like, why don't you take it to the press? And he says, they won't believe me. Yeah. And he was like, oh, well, you also have something else I want. Mm -hmm. And then she wakes up in her apartment. Yeah, he drugged her, <laughs> stuck his hand down her cleavage and took the film that she had hid there. Because she wakes up and immediately goes for her boobs. She's like, oh, he took the film. To be fair. To be fair, it's not anything he hadn't seen before. Well, I wasn't even going to go there. I'm like, it's to save his identity. It's not like he was rooting around in there to rape her. Right. Well, also, she's been giving it up. <laughs> she d she doesn't just, know that. He, j he knows that. She was Batman does not have consent. Bruce Wayne had consent. <laughs> Maybe he took off his mask before he fucked her <laughs> off. Oh, um, God. So, he gets the film, so he is protected, I mm -hmm. guess. The, she takes the stuff to the news. The news announces what combos not to use. And I have Joker is big mad. I don't remember what he did. <laughs> but I have Joker big mad. So him and Alfred have a conversation. Alfred's like, Alfred really likes Vicky. It's like, she's good for you. She's a good person. Maybe you should tell her the truth. Right. He works it. He works himself up to go over to her house, and he's in her apartment. He's trying to say that he's Batman, mm -hmm. and he, he's trying and trying and trying, and then the doorbell rings. Well, she keeps kind of interrupting him, and he goes, "Um, he said you're a real nice girl, and I like you a lot, but for now, just shut up." Oh yeah. And he's like pushes her down in a chair. And she's, she's trying to tell him it's not coming out right. He keeps talking about these double lives. And she's like, oh, God, you're married. He's like, I'm not married. He's like, you know how people, like, wake up and eat breakfast and kiss their wife goodbye and go to a job? And she's like, no. <laughs> and then the doorbell rings. And that is Joker and his Henchman. group of goons. Group of goons. Now, Bruce Wayne kind of hides for a little bit. Mm -hmm. as... He finds a silver dish. Like, he knows he's going to get shot. <laughs> he takes the dish and, like, sticks it down in his shirt. Um, he goes... When he does finally come in the room, he, he lets the Joker know who... He that he knows who he right is. Right up to him, he's like, I know who you are. Yeah. And then starts calling him Jack. And then he does, like, as kind of a distraction, he goes and gets that poker, and then he smashes a vase or whatever on the mm -hmm. mantle. And I feel like maybe he was, it wasn't so much that he was protecting himself, even in case he got shot, he was trying to get shot. Yeah, he knows he's going to get to shot. To create the distraction or yeah. whatever. But before the Joker shoots him, he says, have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Now, And that fucked him up. Yes. Triggered him. A little bit later when he has, you know, you could tell as soon as he said it, he was like, what What did you just say? Yeah. And it, and it kind of fucked he with said, him. He said, oh, it's just something I say to all my prey, and then he shoots him. So, a little bit further on, Bruce is 
He gets the file from his parents' murder, and he's he's trying to figure out like why he remembers this, and he's trying to trying trying, and finally he he has the flashback, and the guy says it, but in the flashback, either they said it wrong both times in the present, or the flashback guy said it wrong because in the flashback he says, "Have you ever danced in the with the devil by the pale moonlight?" Oh. And I, and it sounded off to me because I've. I've always said it the other yeah, the way. Light, yeah. um, but And I was paying attention here. Or no. At, at the very end of the movie, I was paying attention because I knew he said it again. Um, huh. And I it was weird. Notice. I thought that was weird. You need that dude to caught that. But so, the Joker killed Bruce Wayne's parents. Yeah. Which I think I mentioned earlier. Because this was my first Joker, this is my first Batman movie. I I've always to associated it. that being the case. Yeah, and when it wasn't the case in the Dark Knight trilogy, I know it's not the case in the comic books. They might chill out. But when it wasn't the case in Batman Returns, I was like, what? Excuse me? This little street criminal that doesn't matter did not kill his family? Now, Batman Returns was just a sequel to this, right? I didn't say Batman Returns. I said the Dark Knight trilogy. You you did say Batman Returns just now. Well, I didn't mean to. So, the Joker decides to leave? Yeah, I mean, I guess at this point he shot somebody. Well, after he shoots him, he says, you should never rub another man's, another man's rhubarb, which I've never heard said. Now, <laughs> if somebody said that to me, I wouldn't assume that the rhubarb was another man's girlfriend no. or significant other. I would assume that the other man's rhubarb was his penis. penis. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I thought it was me too. But the Joker leaves. Bruce Wayne has vanished. So Vicky Vale naturally goes over to the present that the Joker left on the table yeah. and unwraps the ribbon and out pops like a ceramic can with dead flowers in it. Yeah, you throw that out the window. Yeah, why would you open that? Like, call or the bomb squad, bitch. Even better, the Joker knows where you live. Just grab what you need <laughs> and run. That's a solid point. If the Joker <laughs> you knows where you that live. That box, that, that box has no business with you opening it. You yeah. grab the stuff you need and you just go and you never come back. Yeah, the Joker knows where you live. You live in a hotel now. You go, you could <laughs> call Alfred and be like, I need you to get Bruce. I'm in, like... Where did he go? Is he okay? And also, I'm going to stay in one of your 137 rooms. Yeah, he'll never know I'm there. <laughs> I know which room he never goes to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm crazy. The Joker interrupts the press conference where they're canceling the bicentennial celebration. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? I've just been putting 200 celebration canceled, but sure. So, but that's not what the Joker wants. Right. And Joker wants his, a lot of people in one place at This is same where his time. PR team comes in because he's in yes. like a chair, like grandpa. He has on a button down and he a, has sweat, on makeup. a sweater vest and a tie looking all grandfather like goddamn scary ass Mr. Rogers. And he tells everybody that he can't let it be canceled. The party's on. I'm going to foot the bill. And at midnight, I'm going to drop $20 million cash on the crowd to ensure everybody's there. I don't think he said I was going to foot the bill. But I think he just said that he was going to drop the $20 well, million Well, he said cash. You know, that he provided floats and balloons. He would provide entertainment. And yes. entertainment is going to be him versus Batman one-on-one. -on -one. So, obviously, when you say, I'm going to drop $20 million, if I hear that, my first instinct is like, I'm definitely going, and the very next second I'm going, I am going to be so far away from that fucking place. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that, you're just going to get trampled to death. Yeah. Or, it's not, like, a, it's not, not a good, a good idea. It's not a good when, idea. Never underestimate the power of stupid people in large groups. With money. With money. Yeah. But, Vicki Vale goes back to the paper and Knox shows her the file on Bruce Wayne's parents and finds out that they were murdered in front of him. And he said, what do you think? 
something like this does to a kid. And it, like, sparks instantly in her brain that he's Batman because the next scene, Alfred is just letting her into the fucking Batcave while Bruce Wayne's sitting at his computer dressed as fucking Steve Jobs. Did you notice he was dressed as Steve Jobs? He had on, like... The light colored jeans and a black turtleneck. And I was just in little, little round glasses. Do you think that she knew immediately? Or do you think that Alfred knew he needed to? I think she knew because she didn't seem surprised. Because Knox said, what do you think something like this does to a little boy or to a kid? And she was like, I gotta go. And then the next scene is Alfred Mm. letting her into the back cave. I didn't really catch that. I just thought Alfred was like, okay, it's time. I'm pulling the plug. Um, and she's like, why won't you let me in? Blah, blah, blah. He said she got in. She got in. He, to his credit, he was at her apartment trying to tell. But this is a secret he's keep he's but kept from everybody else. It was hard for I don't know that he has, because in the sequel, he tries to tell the next bitch, too. <laughs> so, she was like, why? Why do you have to do this? And he was like, because nobody else can. Mm-hmm. And that goes kind of in with his character that he he's not just the kind of person that ha- has had everything and has had all this money he doesn't act like a person that everything's been handed to him he definitely appreciates what he does have and what he can do for other people and when he said because nobody else can and he's the only person that has that much money to right. do whatever the hell he wants and he's decided to do good with it mm-hmm. I feel like he's a good a good role model for that so then, she said, can we love each other? And he said, I would like to try. But right now, the Joker's on the loose and I gotta go to work. Which promptly cuts to him in the Batmobile. So you think. To the Batmobile, <laughs> driving into Axis Chemicals. It shields up, it drops a bomb, it drives away, and blows up. Like, eight or nine henchmen. And then the Joker copters hover and everyone's like, oh, you miss me, bitch. But do you do you think Teslas have like a an autopilot blow up building feature? I don't know. Like Do you remember that night I picked you up from work? <laughs> and you were you were almost to the car, so I just turned the headlights on and drove slowly up to you. And yeah. one of the guys you worked with was like Holy shit, your car comes to <laughs> you? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it's like, no, dude. Fucking Sarah took my car. She he was driving. He was so disappointed that it was you driving it. <laughs> it was. Like, he was just like, oh, that. Like, he was so excited for that to be a reality. Like, if the Dodge Durango did that, don't you think you would have seen a commercial? Oh, yeah. A uh, press clipping? Oh, that's fucking funny. So, Batmobile blows up Axis Chemicals. Uh, Oh, so in the flashback that you talked about of his parents getting murdered, there's a scene that was cut where young Commissioner Gordon is, like, consoling Bruce Wayne and dealing with all that, and they cut it, but they stole the idea in the Dark Knight trilogy and used it then. I like, yeah, the, I never, I don't really remember Commissioner Gordon from this movie, and I know why now, because he wasn't memorable as, he wasn't as front row as he was in all the other ones, or everything else, because in everything else, Commissioner Gordon and Batman worked together, at, at least after the first few issues of the comic or like setting things up after everybody figures out Batman's not really a bad guy. Right. Well, I guess not everybody figures that out because I feel like Commissioner Gordon kind of keeps it close to his vest. Like we use Batman. He helps us. I feel like you're pulling your source material from the Batman cartoon from the eighties. Yeah. (laughs) Nineties, whatever. (coughs) So, So the celebration the 200th anniversary celebration at Gotham commences. Joker is on his. Um, Parade originally, flight. it was one a one float deal, but there's one there's a float behind him that has other balloons behind that one. Yeah, 
So there's a Joker balloon, and there's like a big mouthed baby, and some other balloon that I, that I don't really remember. It was like four altogether. But he's riding around on this parade float with a um throne. With a throne on it. Just tossing out money. And he's waving to people, and all of his henchmen are tossing money. Everybody's having a good time. And then he releases the toxic gas from his balloons and starts gassing everybody out. Yeah. Vicky and Knox are there. Knox tells Vicky to get in the car, which might work for a little while, but that car is not airtight. He gets, like, a uh, painter's mask out of the trunk of the car and a baseball bat and goes and starts, like, hitting the minions that are holding the balloon. I think he was trying, if he could get them to let go, that they would let go of the balloon. I get what he was trying for. But I also don't think he, I don't think he realized there were other balloons, too. Right. I don't think it was a sound idea at all. In a situation like that, you can try to yell and scream for people to run. Some people hear you. Most of them won't listen to you, but it is in everybody's best interest if everybody does what's best for themselves for the most part. And he should have told her to get in the car, got in the car, backed away, and got out, tried to make a phone call to somebody saying, hey, this... Well, eventually, she waits for him for a long time, and then eventually she takes off driving, and he throws himself across the hood, and she slams on the brakes and throws him into a bunch of trash. Well, no, she turned down an alley that was a dead end. But she did the right thing when he jumped on. She saw it was him, and she just kept going. Yeah. Like, because if you stop, because those people had started chasing him, all the goons. Um, <laughs> but then you see the bat plane. Right. Is that what it's called? The bat wing. Bat wing. That's... So then you see bat wing. Batman comes in bat wing. He takes the fucking scenic route around the city a few times. He does. He takes his good old time. He's taking a very long time. He presses a lever, finally. Well, you see him dive down towards what would I guess you could say is downtown. He presses a lever, and you can see basically scissors over. Two blades pop out and kind of spread apart like scissors. He grabs the ropes of the balloons in those, clamps them down, and carries them away. So and they could dissipate like, in the atmosphere yeah. and only affect people minutely instead. <laughs> but he takes care of that. But the Joker is pissed. Those are my balloons. <laughs> he keeps saying it. He keeps saying, those are my balloons. He stole my balloons. Why didn't any tell, anybody tell me he had one of those things? <clears throat> Which is the demise of poor old Bottom Bitch Bob. Yeah. Old Triple B... <laughs> <laughs> is loyal to a fault because Joker's like, gun, gun. Bottom Bitch Bob hands him the gun and immediately gets shot. Yeah. I don't even know if he was necessarily mad at Bottom Bitch Bob. He was just was mad and needed to kill somebody, I think. Why didn't anybody tell me this? Bottom Bitch Bob should have been on it. Bottom Bitch Bob don't know Batman's <laughs> got a bat wing. So... Old Batman oh. circles with the Batwing, starts shooting missiles at the parade float, unloads and all the automatic guns on the plane. Live rat, live machine guns, which Batman does not use. And I was like, Oh look, here he's dressed as Steve Jobs. Yep. <laughs> so Batman doesn't use guns. Guns. Yeah, he does now. He's like blasting people with guns. No, he still does. This is the only time I've ever seen that happen. I did not remember that from this movie. Yeah. Because if Batman uses guns, he is now officially a rich Punisher. Which technically is one of my favorite ones because he's angry and he kills people that deserve to die. Now, so... It has always been my understanding that Batman doesn't kill. Yes. Like, that's always yeah. been his thing. And if he can he avoid it. He says it a lot in, like, the 1960s show. Yeah, if he can avoid it, he will not. So, it says, Batman doesn't kill has become a contemporary comics mantra. His early canon betrays this with multiple examples of him murdering criminals 
hailing from his very first issue. In 1939's Detective Comics number 27, during his very first appearance, Batman kicks a man into a vat of acid and calls it a fitting end. This bit was famously redesigned in The Killing Joke to explain the origins of the Joker. And, of course, from in this movie. And then it says, in Detective Comics number 29, Batman kills his first supervillain known as Dr. Death by trapping him in a burning building and chillingly stated death to Dr. Death. So he kills a few times. And then it says the origin of the Batman no killing rule. Um, the first issue we could find where Batman states he never kills is Batman number four, which was released in the series Winter Issue in 1941. He makes a statement which would define the rest of his career during a fight with some nefarious pirates in the story Blackbeard's Crew and the Yacht Society. The exact wording is pretty interesting. Use only the flat of your sword, Robin. Remember, we never kill with weapons of any kind. Apparently, they said that the whole moral climate changed in 1940 to 1941. You couldn't shoot or kill kill villains anymore. DC prepared its own comic code with each artist and writer had to follow. But then, apparently, morality dropped off. And Batman was allowed to kill and use guns again later. But I have always... But I've always heard and been told Batman doesn't kill. And I'm like, dude, whether Batman's meaning to kill or not, like, they're not getting up from that. But he does kill in this movie. Um, I looked up his body count. And I got it from a site, alloutofbubblegum.com, which I thought was a great name. Batman has a body count of 18 people in this movie. Are you sure? Yeah, because he blows up this Axis chemical building. Ah, it has a bunch yeah. of henchmen. He blows up something else. It had a bunch of henchmen. He kills the Joker, and he tosses a guy down a stair, well, hallway bell tower thing here in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he kills, it says Batman kills 18 people, and the Joker killed 33. Sometimes you just gotta take the lesser of two evils. Yeah. I always thought it would be cooler if Batman did use guts and did kill the people who deserved it. It was much later in life that I discovered the Punisher, and I was like, this, this is the dude. This is Batman with guns. This is poor Batman with guns. Well, no one was asked about, like, why is Batman clearly killing people in your stories? And he's like, who the fuck cares? (laughs) Like, he got real mad about it. He's like, who the fuck said Batman doesn't kill? Like, I don't know where you're getting this shit. That's stupid. Of course he fucking kills. But no, he doesn't. That's always been my belief, too. But apparently he does. So he shoots these missiles and these guns at Joker. He somehow misses with all of them. And Joker pulls this gun out of his pants that takes up the entire length of his pant leg. Lines up, takes one shot, and, like, kills the Batwing. Like, bitch, that thing looks like it's got more armor on it than, like, military aircraft do now. But one shot from this souped-up handgun takes it all the way down? Yeah, I thought thought that was a little weird. Yeah, it was a problem. So Vicki Vale runs up and starts searching the wreckage of the Batwing, looking for Bruce Wayne. But the Joker holds that giant fucking gun to her head and kind of kidnaps her. He's like, I have to get you to the cathedral on time and call somebody who's like, pick us up in five minutes. And then Batman starts to get out, and he's like, oh, better make it ten. No, no, no. He did, Batman didn't get out till after they already went in. He looked up, saw how far they were gonna have to climb oh, up, and it was like, "Yeah, um, I haven't been working out, so let's." <laughs> okay. The so Batman then Batman gets up. crawls out. So they're climbing the stairs of this cathedral, basically the bell tower, mm-hmm. um, which goes on forever. It's way up just go ahead and kill my ass shit i ain't making it <laughs> yeah batman trudges his way over there they finally get to the top bitch is losing shoes and jackets and shit like <sighs> like here when they do the searchlights in some places you could tell it's animated i don't think it's animated especially when they do the cathedral. I think, I think you're wrong about this because they said 
Like, they spent $5 million making this thing so that all the effects could be practical. Why would they cheap out on a spotlight? Like, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. I'm telling you. Some... I'm telling you you're wrong. I might be wrong about the spotlight, but there are some parts that are animated. So they go up the cathedral bell tower step. Uh, They get to the top. Batman follows him. He finally gets to the top. Joker says something about wanting to dance. He's dancing with Vicky. Who, I guess she's just tired, but she looks absolutely drugged yeah. out. But the first goon that comes after Batman and does all this... Weird karate flippy. Like a bunch of showing off bullshit. And Batman, like, nut shots him. Gets rid of him. Right. Um, the second goon, Batman has a lot more trouble with. Yeah, he gets his ass kicked by several of them. Well, I think it was just the second one. That that second one lasted a long time. Well, we should also mention that the Joker takes his flower full of acid and, like, makes the bell fall down through the middle of the bell tower. Yeah, and also takes out a lot of the wooden steps with it. Yeah, almost takes Batman out. But... The second gun fights Batman for a few minutes, and then finally Batman, like, scissor flips him into the stairwell. Right. Definitely killing him. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, if he survives, he's definitely not... He's not real functional after that. Yeah. Um, Vicky, she's dancing with the Joker against her will. She sees Batman walk by. So she's like, I'll distract him. So yeah, she, she starts kind of playing along, and she played along too hard. She though. did. She did play she, along too she hard. Did, she did. She made changed a very quick, but he, too quick. I mean, can't be all right with it. She was like, "Oh, Joker, yeah. I I love." If purple. I was the Joker, I'd have been like, "What the fuck?" Purple's my favorite color, and then I think she kind of starts to go down on him, right? Because she just sinks down. She to sinks her knees. down. But then goes away because that's when Batman steps up. I know, up. but she just sinks down to her knees. And for a second, it's just on his face. And this like, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. And then she runs away and like Batman clobbers him. So you think the drapes match the curtains? Or the rug? Yeah, because penis is clown white. And his pubic hair is green? Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. I bet somebody's made a porn like that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Had to. Um, I'm sure. So, Bat- Batman does kind of recite the whole dance of the devil thing at that point, right? Well, the Joker says, you threw me into the acid. You made me. And he said, Batman says, you killed my parents. I made you, but you made me first. Yeah. Which I thought was very poignant. But I think at one point when he steps up or yeah, when he steps up and Vicky ducked, mm-hmm. he said, Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? I believe you're right. And that's Jack or the Joker kinda twitched a little bit. Um so they go at it. And he pretty much just fucks the Joker up real quick. Oh yeah, well, I mean you gotta think it's a superhero fighting essentially an old man. <laughs> but somehow, and I don't exactly know how, how, like I was writing, somehow Batman and Vicky Vale end up being the ones dangling from the edge. The last punch, he, he hits Joker a few times. And he finally, he's like done with him. He launches him over the edge of the cathedral mm-hmm. rooftop. But the Joker had somehow managed to grab hold of something. And when they look over, Joker grabs both of them and yanks them over. Right. So they fall to the ledge that he is standing on. That's kind of on the outside of the building, about six feet down from the rooftop. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just having a good old time stomping around. Yeah, fucking with just him. messing with him. And he hands, he's like, let me here, let me lend you a hand and reaches out towards Vicky. She grabs a fake hand and almost falls. Batman catches her, swoops, uses gravity and her kinetic energy, swoops her up to the others. And 
The Joker's cracking up at his own jokes. The Joker copter comes and lets down the ladder. The there is a rope ladder in almost all episodes of Batman from the sixties. Oh yeah. Like there's a rope ladder everywhere. Yeah. But the ladder comes, he he like climbs up two or three rungs, Batman shoots something that wraps around his ankle. And he's swinging from this But it wraps around the gargoyle. So it keeps wrapping around the the gargoyle. So eventually the gargoyle breaks off and it's just dangling from his foot. It's too heavy. He can't hold onto the ladder. And the Joker falls. Um, Batman and Vicky fall. And he... Grapples. Does some grapples and they end up swinging. It never really shows you how they get down, but whatever. So it comes to the city hall. There's a press conference. Crime in Gotham is over. We're all good now. We like Batman. <laughs> Look, he gave us a signal. But when, when before that, when the Joker was laying dead on the ground, he had that thing that was laughing. <laughs> Who reaches in that crazy asshole's pocket? I am not reaching in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to listen to him laugh until somebody in like a bomb suit gets here. So Batman gives him the bat signal. Yeah, he writes all... a letter to him and says, if you ever need me again, just signal me and gives them the the bat signal. Okay, do you want to take a stab at the... Tomatometer. What do you think his rating is? Public? Either one, both. I'm going to say somewhere in the 70s. The... Tomatometer is 72. Ooh! But the audience score is 84. Ooh. I thought the critics would be lower in the audience high. It was. The audience score was 84 and the critics was 72. No, but I thought it would be lower than 70. I thought the audience score would be. The critics' consensus was an eerie, haunting spectacle. Batman succeeds is dark entertainment even if Jack Nicholson's Joker too often overshadows the title character. Now I have a few reviews. I didn't screenshot this review at first but all your points about Alfred I had to go back just now and get it. The entire review is just a conversation that this person made up between Batman Bruce Wayne and Alfred. They gave it four stars. This is Alfred. Can you come here for a sec? Yes, Master Bruce. Did you let Vicky Vale in the Batcave? <laughs> like, you know I'm trying to maintain a secret identity here, right? Like, yes, Master Bruce. Kind of hard to do that when you let random women in here. Yes, Master Bruce. And this was after I told her we had to go out of town and you immediately told her we weren't going out of town? How dumb do you have to be to make that mistake? Yes, Master Bruce. Look, I hate to do this. You're a good guy, and I really, and you make a really good bowl of clam chowder. But I'm afraid I'm gonna have to let you go. But, Master Bruce, no, get out, Alfred. Master Bruce, that might be unwise. Why is that, Alfred? I know things, Master Bruce. Things you wouldn't want people to know. Like, for example, when you drove the Batmobile into Axis Chemicals and blew it up with all of the Joker's thugs still inside. You must have murdered at least a dozen men in cold blood, Master Bruce. Commissioner Gordon would no doubt be interested in that information. Alfred, I may have spoken too hastily. I agree, Master Bruce. I'll go put on the chowder. Don't really like their... I thought it was quite poignant, though. It hit on all of your issues. You're upset that he didn't have his back. You're upset that he let her in the cave. You're upset no, I that Batman killed people. I wasn't upset that he let her in the cave. I just figured Alfred thought it was time. I'm upset that Batman can't keep it in his pants. That every girl he has sex with, he's got to fucking tell he's Batman. See, I don't think you're upset that he can't keep it in his pants. You're upset that he just can't keep his identity secret. No, his dick comes out and he's like, I'm Batman. <laughs> maybe he wants to role play like he's just gonna have to start straight jacking off if he can't keep his mouth shut if he gets off in them feelings it's awful anyway half a star I'm sorry 
but I don't understand how any idiot could like this film. This movie sucks because of one thing. It's DC. All DC films suck, with the exception of Batman v Superman. Marvel makes good films. Marvel has never made a movie that wasn't good. Let me good. stop you right there. Pe- Batman vs. <laughs> Superman was a load of fucking garbage just because, oh, Martha, wh- what did you say? Are you talking about my mom? Like, no, motherfucker. Like, his mom. Talking friend. about my mom. Like, we're, we're, your mom said Martha too. Oh, dude, we're bros. Like, come on. People say Hulk isn't good, but it's Marvel, so it is. I'm sorry, all DC films suck. Sorry, one out of ten. So, like, I if, also prefer Marvel to DC. When I'm rating that, I don't take Tim Burton's Batman and Joel Schumacher's into consideration. What? Oh, we're gonna watch him launch his ass down there. And I'm pretty sure it's one of the Scenes where they animate the end of him they falling. Do not animate anything. No, watch close. Oh, you see Batman's shoes? What? Maybe what? that wasn't. Anyway, I also like Marvel more than DC. But this guy's just got a real problem. And. If you're going to say the exception is Batman versus Superman, your opinion no longer matters to me at all. When was this written? November 13th, 2017. When did Wonder Woman come out? After. Wonder Woman's the only DC movie that I was like, that's good. Now, I haven't seen Aquaman. Is there another one we haven't seen? Um, But Batman versus Superman was garbage. Yeah. Sorry if you like that movie, but <laughs> is it the one Dad keeps forgetting that he see he's seen? Yeah, because it's so And then he'll watch it again. He's like, okay, no, that I do remember that. And it's he's not like, I've worth remembering. And he's like, oh yeah, no. It's I not worth remembering that. because basically. Oh no, no, it's not. It's Justice League that he had. He does that with. Oh yeah. Basically, they get into a, a fight because they don't communicate. He's like, dude, we're on the same side. They could have been like, dude, we're on the same side. I want to keep bad shit from happening. Oh, you want to keep bad shit from happening too? Oh, all right, dude, let's do it together. Like, it came down to fucking Batman saying Martha. Wonder Woman had to bring them together. And Superman being like, what'd you say? You talk about my mama? One star. Watch this movie if you want to study what peak white male power fantasy looks like. Not having grown up with it and watching it for the first time in 2019 from my current perspective as a local social justice warrior, this movie aged very poorly. I don't want to. Stop. Okay, before you continue (laughs) with this... I want to. I want to say I. I feel like I'm middle of the road as far as political shit goes. People would probably put me in the liberal side. That's that's okay because I feel like I'm more liberal. I'm but pretty, fuck this lady. I'm pretty liberal. This Karen here. Like, I don't it's have a, a fucking. Right. It's a just a fucking movie. It's. <laughs> it's just a fucking movie based on a comic book. I spent a good third of the movie just being confused as to which character is who because it's all the same type of white old man and I genuinely struggle to tell them apart, which being a white person myself is quite amusing. It just feels like you could assign any of the actors any other role in this movie and it would not have changed a thing. Female characters, all of which are the same blonde, blue-eyed type of pretty, are pretty much only there to scream dramatically, faint, and thirst over Bruce Wayne, both as millionaire and as Batman. It's tiring to watch. I really did not like the Joker portrayal either, but that's probably more of a personal, I'm used to the later ones, and this one makes me uncomfortable thing, rather than an objective problem. So, Karen here. So, (sighs) 
Uh, I need to back up. Um, Guys, I'm oh. 100% giving him an aneurysm. He has not stopped holding his head and rubbing it. So, Karen here is too fucking stupid to tell these people apart? I guess maybe the minor characters is what she's No, 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 like, no, no. Maybe, like, Gordon and the mayor. Oh, you mean Al- the old, fat, Italian-looking dude versus know. Knox, who is younger? I don't know. I have no problem. And looks nothing apart. like Michael Keaton? I don't know. And I'm and not trying to defend can this you, person. I can you just name for this? Can you name another female character? No. There wasn't one. There was just no. Kim Basinger as Vicky Vale. Right. That's why they all look the same, bitch. It's one person. Yeah, she's the only one. Now, she is also apparently a big fan of interview with a vampire because her or his, I don't know, I'm going with her username is Vampire Lestat. Were those books the same? title yes would you like another one i'm I'm still working through karen here because <laughs> i had something else okay like people need to fucking let go of it 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 is what it is it's a movie based on a, loosely based on a comic book like look at this commissioner gordon looks nothing like all the other white people because he's fat old and ugly like all people get when they get old. Like they didn't even use a bunch of people from the same age group to make these people. There's younger ones, there's older ones, there's middle age. I would say that age. all of the gangsters are pretty interchangeable, but they also die very quickly, so who cares? I don't think all the gangsters were interchangeable. But they also didn't They were the they most diverse the group there. No, not his henchmen. Like the group of gangsters he tried to take over and they were just like, "Ah, fuck it, I'm going to kill him." Yeah, they were the most diverse group there. Eh. They had a lot they of different... They didn't even have names. Who cared? <laughs> but yeah, you ready for another one? Yeah. It's one... gotta be better than that one. Eh. One star. Gave a half a star to this back in 2014 when I was in my peak superhero movies are dumb phase. I would just like you to know that in that, they used R, the letter, instead of A-R-E to save time. This person is completely disregarded already. <laughs> Crucially, after the release of Birdman, which I still think is good, but I like less now. I returned to Burton's Batman, hoping to appreciate it a little more, maybe as a time capsule of a simpler time when superhero films could just be a cat and mouse game between good and evil, Let me stop. rather than an endless stream of unresolved, interconnected subplots and poorly constructed CGI action set pieces. This is a creative writing major who has learned to use a bunch of big words because nobody goes I'll do this and maybe I'll appreciate it more blah 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 they're like "Uh, I'm gonna watch Batman again maybe I'll give it another chance maybe I was being a dick the first time like I was a creative writing major for a while yeah but you weren't like that I was just like yeah this is basically the former but There are so many elements that I just don't work in. I'm sorry, that just don't work in this that I struggle to name a single element I enjoy here. Keaton as Bruce Wayne doesn't work. The prosthetics on Jack Nicholson's face don't work. The quote romance with damseling of Kim Basinger doesn't work. The harsh interior lighting doesn't work. The fakey fake sets of Gotham City streets don't work. The anti-establishment ethos of the Joker doesn't work. The attempt to pull heartstrings with Bruce Wayne's tragic backstory doesn't work. The final we're two sides of the same coin showdown between Batman and the Joker doesn't work. The Prince songs definitely don't work. The two-hour runtime definitely doesn't either. I'm not mad about it. It's not evil. Oh, you're not mad about it? Uh, It's not evil or anything, but it's also just not dot, 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 good, question mark. On any level, question mark? Sorry if this offends. No, you're not, bitch. What's what's that person's name? Andrew Swafford. All right, Andrew. You know who else doesn't work? Fucking Andrew Swafford. Because nobody who actually has a job can go through all that. I thought that the final We're Two Sides of the Same Coin showdown, I made you, but you made me first, 
was very poignant. And, I mean, he kills him in this, but in comics and other stuff, sets up a lifetime of him being his yeah. villain. Yeah. Yeah. So, Andrew Swafford, mm-hmm. uh, what would you say it grossed? 400 some million? Yeah. Yeah, 400 some million works, Andrew Swafford. Oh, uh, six weeks on the Billboard top charts for num- number one album? Fucking works, Andrew Swafford. Yeah. Suck a dick. One star. Just as good as The Dark Knight, except that it actually sucks. <laughs> I don't agree with them, <laughs> but they set it up. They set it up right. One, the, one and a half stars. Cheesy visuals, a way overdone Joker performance, and lame action only bring one word to mind in relation to this film. Stupid. I feel like that person is just this is thought, not their cup of tea. I thought Joker's performance was pretty. Pretty good. So if you're going to call that ever done, what are you going to say about Heath Ledger? Oof. I feel like Heath Ledger, and, and I didn't notice it until this, this watch through, is Jack Nicholson does do a little bit of when he's talking a lot. He He did that lip thing. And Heath Ledger took that to a whole new fucking level. Like what, do you, what do you give the movie? I think I would give it about a five, three and a half. I'll give it about a three, three and a half. Like I feel like four is too high for it. Mm-hmm. Like it's not bad. I like it. Like some a lot of the problems people have, especially with these reviews and older movies, they're they're holding it up to today's standards, mm-hmm. which would you. Know, doesn't look as flashy as all the new movies. So they think just because of that aspect, they think it sucks or it's trash or it's bad, blah, blah, blah. This person is a um, professional critic. And I screen capped their whole review, but I think I'm just going to take a snippet of it where they talk about um, Jack Nicholson's Jack Napier into the Joker fared especially poor. As Nicholson, though quite good here, never quite manages to make the role his own, as Heath Ledger did in 2008's The Dark Knight. Uh, It often feels as though Nicholson is just riffing on Cesar Romero's take from the campy 60s television series. Of course, that's what they went on. Like, that was an example of what... But yeah, that was the only (laughs) example. Until the killing joke. That was the only... TV. That was the only film example. Right, that's what I'm saying. But there were comic book yeah. source material to pull from, but that was the only like live action source material there was. But I still feel like I agree. Heath Ledger was my favorite Joker. It was otherworldly. It was just next because it level was so shit. crazy. It was next level. But, but I don't feel like you can compare 1989 Joker. Like, fucking Heath Ledger's Joker would have scared people in 1989. Like, people, this would have got, like, a fucking R rating. Like, uh, watching this movie, you could tell that Heath Ledger took a lot of cues from Jack Nicholson's Joker. But he enhanced, like, he made it his own on a whole new level. Right. Like, that lip smacking got, like, made it much more creepy, but... I think he got a little bit of that from Nicholson because there was a scene where he's like and he holds his mouth weird and mm-hmm. then he starts to talk and he does and the same the thing with his tongue. Yeah. And, and it, I was like, that's fucking creepy and that's where Heath Ledger got it. Yeah. Now, Cesar Romero's Joker, my issue with it is that he never felt the need to fucking shave his mustache. So they always just had the white. So they would put the white, like, pancake makeup on him, but you could see his mustache through it, and it drove me insane. Like, bitch, there's fucking 13-year-olds on YouTube right now taking a washable glue stick and running it over their eyebrows and then putting concealer on it and then putting whatever the fuck-ass collar body makeup on it they want, and you can't even tell they have eyebrows. And these makeup executives in the 60s couldn't come up with a way to fucking get rid of his mustache. Now, granted, we now have HD TVs, and you probably couldn't see that shit in the 60s, but damn if you can't see it now, and it was a bad choice. 
I'm sure I sound like all these people that are like, you're judging it by today's standards. But shit, I just wanted his facial hair gone. So you give it a three? I'll give it a three. Now, this is where we differentiate. I like this movie. I fucking love the train crash of sequels. They are god awful, and I love them with my whole heart. The best thing about all of those sequels is them swimming up to the Riddler's Island and Chris O'Donnell mm-hmm. as Robin says, Holy Rusted Metal Batman. What? Holy Rusted Metal Batman. What? No, Batman. It's Holy Rusted Metal. <laughs> That's the the best part of the entire thing. Now, Robin was supposed to be in this film. And, like, he was in the first two scripts, there was a Robin, and they decided it was just too hard to work him in. It seemed like there was a lot going on, and at the same time... Nothing. Not a lot, <laughs> but they were trying to set up everything, I guess. Right. Um, but sometimes... <sighs> and I think this... I think a lot of movies suffer from this problem. They spend too much time building this backstory when they could just drop hints here and there and people go, oh. The, like, people just push it together. a lot of credit. No, there's a lot of shows that we watched that where you kind of have to push it together. And the show just kind of expects, it's not like a surprise. The show expects you to put it together. Right. And you do. I think in general, most people are smart enough to get it. Somebody, Fresh off of reading these one-star reviews, I don't know, buddy. One-star reviews are just a small percentage of people who have... How many reviews have you ever left for anything? Exactly. Not at all. Exactly. These people have nothing to do but to spit vile hatred at something that they don't like and it doesn't matter. Because now, oh, I Andrew Swafford. I, no. I appreciate reviews on like Amazon for something I'm going to like spend some money on, like to know if it's good or not. But I tend to not take people's reviews of movies at all serious because everybody has such different taste in movies. It's, and it's objective. These people are so hard on shit. Like, I tend to just appreciate things for that they were made and that they're there. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be great. Shit, like I said, the cheesier and the more god-awful. Like, this was a good Batman movie, but the next few that are fucking awful are the best. No, they're not. Come on. All of Arnold Schwarzenegger <coughs> as Mr. Freeze's ice jokes. Come on. Those are terrible. They're terrible. I like the newer Batman. Yeah, but they're different. It's a whole different vein of movie. They are much darker. They're dark. They're gritty. Batman's always been a little darker than the other heroes. These are more lighthearted and funny. Especially after Joel Schumacher gets a hold of it. Like, Tim Burton does this one and the next one. They're kind of more dark and gritty. But then, especially the next one with the penguin and Oh God, it's it's kind of real dark and gritty. Like when he bites into that fish, like it, it makes me crazy. All right, we gonna wrap this up. We should be back onto a regular schedule now. We had some illnesses and some scheduling conflicts. We had big plans for Christmas that just didn't pan out quite right. Next year. Next year. <laughs> There's always another Christmas, right? Hopefully. So next week we're doing All right, so it's 2020, the whole new year new you bullshit. Uh we're going to do heavyweights. Thumbs up to Disney Plus. Disney Plus. <laughs> I'm gonna shout out Disney Plus till they fucking give me a free subscription. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> we wouldn't even know. <laughs> Huh? They wouldn't even know. They wouldn't even notice. <laughs> anyway, Heavyweights is a great movie. It's funny. About Fat Camp. 
Never heard of Fat Camp until this went on, came along. Ben Stiller's awesome in it. As a crazy, another crazy person. All right, that has been running back for Batman. I'm Jason. I'm Sarah. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Run It Back Pod, on Twitter at Pod Run It Back, and today I created a TikTok account, oh. which is at Run It Back Pod. You can come help us take over Gen Z's app. And we will fill it up with 80s and 90s content, make all the Generation Z people confused as hell. There's nothing on there yet, but follow us. Come join us. We're going to do some stuff. I'm Batman.